this video proves two facts about cross product and gives an informal justification of a third. It proves that the length of the cross product is given by this formula and also proves that A cross B is perpendicular to both A and B. The video gives an informal justification of the fact that the direction of A cross B is given by the right hand rule. First, let's prove the length formula. A cross B is defined in terms of components as the determinant of this matrix. Here, A1, A2, and A3 are the components of A, and B1, B2, B3 are the components of B. If I expand this out, like I did in the previous video, I get the following expression. Now, if I take the length of A cross B squared, I can get that by squaring each component and adding them up. So that looks like the following. Please pause the video and expand everything out algebraically. You should get the following. You can check that this mess can be rewritten as a1 squared plus a2 squared plus a3 squared times b1 squared plus b2 squared plus b3 squared minus a1b1 plus a2b2 plus a3b3 squared. To check that, you need to multiply all of this out and then cancel terms. Now this last line can be rewritten as the length of A squared times the length of B squared minus the dot product A dot B squared. But we know the dot product can be written as the length of A times the length of B times cosine theta, where theta is the angle between A and B. So substituting that into my expression, I get this. And now I'm going to factor out the length of A squared times the length of B squared from each of my two terms. So that gives me 1 minus cosine squared theta. Notice that it's no problem to factor out the length of A squared times the length of B squared from this term since the whole thing is squared. Finally, 1 minus cosine squared theta is the same thing as sine squared theta. Now the equation that we want follows directly by taking the square root of both sides, provided that sine of theta is positive, which it will be if theta is between 0 and pi. And that completes the proof of the length formula. Next, let's prove that the vector a cross b is perpendicular to both a and b. We're going to use the convention that the zero vector is perpendicular to every other vector. So that way, if a cross b happens to be the zero vector, then a cross b will be perpendicular to a and perpendicular to b automatically. So now let's show that a cross b is perpendicular to a in other cases. It's going to be enough to look at the dot product because if we can show that a cross b dotted with a is equal to 0, then we'll know that the length of a cross b times the length of a times cosine theta is 0, where theta is the angle between a and b. That follows from the formula for dot product in terms of lengths and angle. And if the product of these things is equal to 0, then either the length of a cross b is 0, or the length of a is 0, or cosine of theta is 0. Well, if the length of a vector is 0, then the vector itself is 0. So we have that either a cross b is 0, the 0 vector, or a is a 0 vector, or cosine theta is 0. Now, by our convention, the zero vector is perpendicular to any other vector. So in these cases, we definitely have that a cross b is perpendicular to a. And in this other case, the more interesting case, cosine theta is zero means that theta, the angle between the vectors, must be 90 degrees. And so the two vectors, a cross b and a, 
are indeed perpendicular. So it is indeed enough to show that the dot product is zero, and that's what we'll focus on now. To show that the dot product is zero, I'll write everything out in terms of components and do some algebra. First, a cross b is given by this expression, where a1, a2, and a3 are the components of a, and b1, b2, b3 are the components of b. Now, if we dot a cross b with a, we need to dot this expression with the vector of components a1, a2, a3. The formula for dot product gives this expression, and distributing out gives this expression. Now, the fun begins. This first term that has a1, a2, b3 in it cancels out with this term. And the second term, a1, a3, b2, cancels out with this one. Finally, this third term with a2, a3, b1 cancels out with this term. And so, since everything cancels out, the dot product is just zero, as we wanted to prove. A similar argument shows that a cross b dotted with b is equal to zero, and so a cross b is perpendicular to b as well. Finally, I'd like to give the idea behind the fact that the direction of a cross b is given by the right-hand rule. Certainly, we can check this for a few easy vectors. For example, if a is the vector i and b is the vector j, then a cross b is given by this determinant. Expanding out, I get this, which simplifies to k. So in the case when a is i and b is j, the cross product is k and not negative k, so the right-hand rule is satisfied. Now, if a and b deviate slightly from i and j, then it makes sense that their cross product should only deviate slightly from k. After all, the components of the cross product are continuous functions of the components of the original vectors. So if a cross b is close to k, it must also satisfy the right-hand rule. It can't all of a sudden jump to the other side and, and satisfy a left-hand rule instead. But if I continue these small perturbations of a and b, I can get all possible pairs of vectors. And therefore, for all possible pairs of vectors a and b, the cross product has to satisfy the right-hand rule. This intuitive argument is the idea that lies behind a proof of this fact. In this video, I proved the length formula for cross product, and I proved the fact that a cross b is perpendicular to both a and b. I showed that the direction of a cross b is given by the right-hand rule in one example, where a was i and b was j, and I gave an intuitive argument for why the direction of a cross b should be given by the right-hand rule in general.